talk. It's just that today I finally realized that I was raised to be a failure. I was groomed for it. Naturally, it all goes back to Evelyn and Walt. Christ, how sick analysts must get of hearing a mama and daddy made their darling into a fairy. It's beyond just that now. Today, I finally began to see how some of the other pieces of the puzzle relate to them. Like why I never finished anything I started in my life? My neurotic compulsion to not succeed. Donald, you're so serious this evening. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. What's more boring than a queen doing a Judy Garland imitation? A queen doing a Betty Davis imitation. Meanwhile, back at the Evelyn and Walt syndrome. Failure is the only thing with which I feel at home, because that's what I was taught at home. Where did you get that sweater? This clever little shop in the right bank called Hermes. I work my ass off for 45 lousy dollars a week scrubbing floors and you all surround throwing cashmere sweaters on. The one on the floor in the John is Vicuna. Well, I beg your pardon. You can get a job doing something else, you know. Nobody's holding a gun to your head to be a charwoman. And that is how you say your neurosis. Gee, and I thought it's why I was born. Besides, just because I wear expensive clothes does not necessarily mean they're paid for. Well, that is how you say your neurosis. Well, I'm a spoiled brat. So what do I know about maturity? The only thing mature means to me is Victor Mature. I can understand people having an affinity for the stage, but movies are such garbage. Who can take them seriously? Well, I'm sorry if your sense of art is offended. Odd as it may seem, there was no Schubert Theater in Hot Coffee, Mississippi. However, thanks to the silver screen, your neurosis has got style. It takes a certain flair to squander one's unemployment check at Pavillon. What's so snappy about being head over heels in debt? The only thing smart about it is the ingenious ways I dodge the bill collectors. Come to think of it, you're the type that gives faggots a bad name. And you, Donald? You were a credit to the homosexual. A reliable, hard-working, floor-scrubbing, bill-paying fag who don't owe nothing to nobody. I am a model fairy. You think it's just nifty? How I've always flitted from Beverly Hills to Rome to Acapulco to Amsterdam. Picking up a lot of one-night stands. And a lot of custom-made duds along the trail. Well, I'm here to tell you that the only place in all those miles, the only place I've ever been happy was on the goddamn plane. Run, charge, run. Borrow, make, spend, run. Waste, waste, waste. And why? And why? We need. There's nothing quite as good as feeling sorry for yourself, is there? Nothing. I adore cheap sentiment. <laughs> Stage, new moon. Alan. My God, I don't believe it. How are you? Listen, Michael, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm all tied up tonight. Uh, no, tonight's no good for me. Oh, I'm all tied up too, but I... I thought I might just drop by for a drink. What do you mean now? Oh, um... Well, Alan, old buddy, um... Well, you see, it's a friend's birthday, and I'm having some people in. 
sorry I can't ask you to join us, but I'm afraid it just wouldn't work out, kiddo. Is it place cards? No, it's not. It's just... Well, I'd hate to see you for just ten minutes. Oh, Mickey, please. Alan, what's wrong? <laughs> Mickey, I've got to see you about something right away. Well, um, now look, um, come on over. Oh, no, that's perfectly okay. Um, just come on over and we'll have a quick drink. It's the same old address. Okay. Well, am I stunning? You're absolutely stunning. You look like shit, but I'm absolutely stunned. Your grapes are how you say it's our. Listen, you won't believe what just happened. Hey, where's my drink? I didn't make it. I've been on the phone. My old roommate from Georgetown just called. Oh, Alan, um, what's his name? McCarthy. He's up here from Washington on business or something. And he's on his way over here. Well, I hope he knows the lyrics to Happy Birthday. Listen, asshole, what am I going to do? He's straight. Square City. I mean, he's really terribly drunk an awfully good family. Oh, that's so important. I mean, his family looks down on people in the theater. So what do you think he's going to feel about this freak show I've got booked in for dinner? Oh, Christ, is that good. He really lost his spring on the telephone. He started crying. And that's not his style at all. He's so goddamn pulled together, he wouldn't show any emotion if he was in a plane crash. What am I going to do? Are you suddenly ashamed of your friends? Donald, you are the only person I know of whom I'm truly ashamed. Now, look, some people have different standards, and we have to acknowledge them. You know what you are, Michael? You're a real person. Thank you, and fuck you. Want some crack crab? No, thanks. How could you ever have been friends with a bore like that? Well, believe it or not, there was a time in my life when I didn't go around announcing that I was a faggot. Well, that must have been before speech replaced sign language. Now, don't give me any static on that score. I did not come out until after I graduated from college. It seems to me the first time we tricked, we met in a gay bar on 3rd Avenue during your, uh, junior year. Cunt. Oh, I thought you'd never say it. Are you sure you don't want some crack crab? Not yet, if you don't mind. Mike, know you'd be working the streets. You want my body? You're gonna have to pay for it. The last time I saw a leg like that, I had a message attached to it. Get in. Hi, big boy. You like a Chinese laundry? Hello, Emery. No ticky, no nooky. <laughs> well, that's all we need for it to rain. You want some more club soda? What? There's nothing but club soda in that glass. I've been watching you for several Saturdays now. You've actually stopped drinking, haven't you? And smoking, too. How long's it been? Five weeks. That's amazing. I found God. Or is God dead? <laughs> yes, thank God. I could always tell when you were getting high. One way. I'd get hostile. What made you stop? The analyst? Well, it certainly had a lot to do with it. But mainly, I just didn't think I could survive another hangover, that's all. Didn't think I could get through one more morning after ick attack. Morning after what? Icks. Anxiety. Guilt. From that split second, when your eyes pop open and you say, my God, what did I do last night? And then suddenly, zap. Total recall. Tell me about it. And then that struggle to survive until lunchtime, when you have a double Bloody Mary. That is, if you've waited till lunch. And then you're half pissed and useless for the rest of the afternoon. So you hang on till cocktail time, and by then you're ready for what the evening holds, which hopefully is another party, where the whole goddamn cycle starts all over again. Well, I've been on that merry-go-round long enough, and I either had to get off or die of centrifugal force. Joe College has finally arrived, and suddenly I've gotten such icks. Oh, uh... Now, Donald, when he gets up, give me a minute. Michael, don't insult me by giving me any lecture on acceptable social behavior. I promise to sit with my legs spread apart and keep my voice in a deep register. Donald, 